so that being said um i stumbled across a couple of sets that i've been playing or that i kind of ripped off of youtube and converted mp3 and then put that onto my itunes and then put it onto my phone um these two sets from boiler room number one set being from this um girl called Anne, who i wasn't less that familiar with prior um wasn't really familiar with her djing pr um her DJing repertoire, DJ repertoire, what you call it? Her DJing ability, let's say for that regard. And I only stumbled across this stream because there was a link that was on Twitter of Bless My Daughter playing the same set. And then I saw a link of Benji B playing on there. And he was, you know, I skipped one bit where he was playing Amma Piano. And my set, a part of my soul just died seeing someone like a Benji B play Amma Piano. Jeremy was like, oh my God, they're going to gentrify this music already, in it? I can already see it, but I can already see it. I was just like, God, no. What next? Fucking, fucking. Deborah DeLuca playing in the middle of Naples somewhere. I just can't. Please, just let let us have it for a bit, and then you can have it later on in it. They did the same thing to Funky House, and they're gonna kill this as well. But anyway, let's story for another day. But yeah, this girl and um, she absolutely destroyed. And again, I think maybe my standout set from what I saw on the stream. Again, I wasn't there at the event. It's a boiler room event. I'm sure it probably felt different being there. Um, but she definitely had the standout set, and you would hope, you would imagine, she probably, you know, the pay structure or the fee that she gets according to in comparison to something like a blessed madonna is very drastically different obviously because blessed madonna's obviously been in it longer she probably sells more tickets blah 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 but this is why it's a good example why i think spots like but yeah this is yeah this is why i think this is why i think spots like boiler room are important because there's an argument to be said earlier or later on i'm going to talk about this topic where people have been speaking about um something on business the business techno instagram account where they're basically saying that how all the boiler room are exploiting their artists by not paying them or it's malarkey and i don't really necessarily agree that i honestly do think it was only actually i only really learned of it recently i didn't know that boiler room didn't pay their artists i just assumed that everyone got a, a flat fee or something i didn't know it was they just didn't pay no one which is interesting but hey we continue but i still don't think it's a big deal i still think boiler room's platform and what they're able to produce or what they're able to provide for the dj has far more value outside of monetary than they could ever do for it, them paying a fee i think so and again someone like an ans who i think was maybe the standout dj set on this night has the opportunity to have people like myself stumble on her set because she's playing alongside the blessed madonna on the same lineup do you know what i mean so because of that i'm gonna watch her and then she's gonna have loads of little viral moments because as you see with this video that i'm gonna pop on the screen in a moment there's like cool dancers in the background she's obviously playing amazing she looks great behind the decks the sound is good they're catching funny people in the crowd do you know what i mean all this stuff adds to it and that virality online is definitely going to end up getting her probably more bookings or more interest or just some new fans do you know what i mean and that i think is a benefit that you can't really match monetarily i don't think especially when it comes to live streaming a show like this you know what i mean i don't really know like i'd hate to know how much it costs for a boiler room to put on their events just to live stream fair enough it's different now because the technology is far more improved than it did when they first started in what was it 2010 or whatever it was i can definitely understand that now the argument could be like oh anyone can do this you just need obs okay cool but still they are fronting it do you know what i mean they're fronting it they're putting it out they're kitting it out for the most part uh, with the exception of a couple of djs who you know spill drink with a couple of sets where someone spills a drink on the deck or something i haven't really seen too many boiler rooms where there's been a lot of tech issues for the most part the sounds perfect you get the dj playing in a great space you know they get to play for in front of a cat in a rapturous audience a bit of a random one because the tickets are free and all you got to do is sign up but still a rapturous one not regardless and i think for sure um and hopefully we'll get a lot of love from this set because i definitely thought it was one of the stronger ones in this um whole thing and i think there was a bit on the set as well that i want to play for you guys here i've got it here on the screen i think it was about 39 minutes in it around here where was it yeah it was around here probably one of the best little parts of the set gives you a vibe gives you a kind of a little bit of a feel of what it was like to be there let's just go back here actually where these girls are because they absolutely smashed it with their choreography let's go from here so this is Anne's playing at boiler room london um recorded on september the 4th 2021 i'll post a link in the description so you can check it out yourself but definitely a standout set that i've been listening to in the gym for the last couple of days <laughs> Don't, don't, 
don't you like don't don't you have to just love and adore club spaces or just places where djs play electronic music because there's legitimately nothing tying those people behind the dj right in terms of what they look like right if you could judge a book by its cover and kind of you know um uh what you call it make up what they're into who their friends are where they go where they hang out where they work the kind of stuff that they read or watch or listen to there's not much that kind of ties them together apart from their love for electronic music isn't it that's how amazing it is the amount of people the different types of people it brings together it's just absolutely fantastic it really really is in this paper look at those girls smashing it so good Come on, come on, son. so 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 good honestly so so good definitely check it out give Anz a listen um one of my standout sets one of my standout sets there's another one that i want to mention from the boiler room this is at the what is it ampere open air is a guy called david vunk again another argument for why i think boiler rooms non or refusal to pay dj fees or you know preference to basically tell them it's better it's more of an opportunity that's what i'm gonna say Boreham is one of the only places, you know, some people say, oh, yeah, it's, you know, when you're doing freelancing, creative sort of work and they're like, oh, we don't have a budget, but there's opportunity in it. The opportunity is the kind of, you know, the monetary value that they're ascribing to it. They're, hey, you get a chance to be in this magazine. It's read by a thousand people. It's usually always fluff and it's usually air. They should usually pay you because they're paying other somebody else for the most part. Right. So you definitely should go in there and ask for your coins. But there are some rare occasions where sometimes just doing the thing for free and not even asking for a, for a fee, not even asking to be you know reimbursed monetarily can actually serve you in the long term and i think this is a good example of it when it comes to david vunk again i'm sure this is somebody a lot of the heads know i think if i'm not mistaken i think he's dutch um and whatnot but i don't really know the guy um it looks like he's an absolute beast on the festival circuit you don't really see him getting booked in many clubs maybe because he doesn't want to go but he seems to be an absolute madman when it comes to the festival circuit he's always traveling somewhere he's always doing mad dates all over the place i think again we lose we lose the ability to find out about David Vunk because we don't have the resident advisor DJ poll thing anymore because some DJs got too butthurt about you know, being ranked really low in the, in the thing or something. It's just annoying. I don't really understand why that got rid of, why they got rid of that. It's such a, it's such a like, um, you know, it's such a, an occasion where you're cutting your nose off to spite your face sort of thing. It didn't make any sense because one of the great things about the resident advisor DJ poll, even though maybe like, let's say the top 50 might have been gamed or whatnot, still you had the opportunity of finding many people under the top 50 from 50 to 100 who were amazing. And also if you went to the comments, comments, sorry, there'll be loads of people recommending people who they like liked, who they saw when they went out somewhere. And because there was an upvote system, you had people just like, you know, writing lists of loads of amazing local DJs they saw play or someone they saw playing some random festival festival in georgia and then a random person can be like oh yeah i remember that he or she and they can upvote your comment and usually you'd find out that there were amazing lists that were put together in the comments that were probably far better than the list that was created by the resident advisor sorry by the dj poll right that was obviously public but in general one of the good things about a dj poll you've got to find some you know some little nuggets of surprise i think that's how i discovered like mcde mc drum ensemble based on one of the resident advisor dj polls so you get to find people that you probably wouldn't have found because you think oh how, why is he a number 40 who's this guy and then you click on the thing you hear what it sounds like blah 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 and i think we lose that discoverability so one of the great places to get that kind of discoverability and to kind of put yourself in front of people is to go on these live streaming platforms and boiler room is a great example of this and david vonk is another example because again i'm sure he's a local hero i'm sure on the festival circuit he slays and people know who he is but i had no idea who this guy is before i saw a video of him performing on boiler room and this is another ex example again of why that space is so good and also david vonk himself he's got this 
when it comes to style and technique of DJing, he's got this really interesting technique that he does where he doesn't necessarily he's not the most technical when it comes to mixing. You know, I went to see flipping um, Jeff Mills the other day and that was a real lesson and a reawakening in what people can and should do behind the decks if they have the ability to, especially with modern day technology. Like he's legitimately reconstructing, reconstructing songs behind the decks. Like he's basically doing Ableton and whatnot live, right? Improv using fucking vinyl. It's absolutely insane what he's doing. Looping stuff, cutting stuff, bringing stuff here, bringing stuff there. It's absolutely masterful how he does it. Absolutely masterful, I swear to God. And it was really, I open to see but there's also something to be said for the people like you know I think of someone like a DJ Harvey is a good example they're not the most technically gifted DJs in terms of like being able to cut and do all these mad stuff with the effects and loops and whatnot but what they do have ability is to, is to kind of blend stuff in together or maybe have what David Vunk does is that he has the, probably the best sequencing I've seen like the in terms of like knowing what comes next and not kind of throwing stuff off with certain tunes I think that's where Dixon kind of comes into his own as well that ability to kind of have a flow in his set and obviously maybe it comes from the fact that he's played longer sets before in his history blah blah I don't really know but regardless David Bunk's mixing style is quite basic right he kind of waits for the breakdown waits for the end of the chorus maybe loops a bit here and then kind of brings in the second tune pretty hard and aggressive he doesn't really wait around for it but I think more so it's a sequencing that he's able to do and obviously the fact that he's one of the best showmen behind the decks like you know if you're a fan of the you know the, Pat the, the Patrick Masons of this world and stuff and people that actually look like they're having fun behind the decks apart from looking all sad and dour I definitely recommend you check out David Vunk and this is a set of his playing at the what's it called the um, Ampiri open air I think it's also about 12 minutes here where he absolutely slays I'm going to play a bit of you now come on son <laughs> See how the other track just comes in, aggressive. Yo, this is like choppy as hell. Isn't it? Let me just see if I can knock down the settings a bit. It's being super choppy. Maybe we've got too many things loaded up. Let's get to 480 and see what happens. Boom, 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 boom. That's better. Nice. Yeah, see, style wise, it's quite. And then sex songs come in, but it's still, the vibe is still being kept. But he's such a great showman behind the decks, you know what I mean? He's having fun, he's dancing, interacting with the crowd. Leave it there. That's David Vunk at the Ampere Open Air. Definitely one of my standout sets that I've seen on the interwebs. And like I said, um, the vibe is back, man. It looks like the vibe is back. That's maybe one of the better crowds I've seen um, playing or someone playing for in, uh, on Boiler Room. Usually they're a little bit dour and a little bit, you know, reserved and in themselves. But it looks like everyone's really happy to be out, um, being able to touch faces, touch elbows, arms, shoulders, knees and toes. And they're having a whale of a time. They're having a whale of of a time. 